What's going on people? Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the best type of camera that you can buy as a beginner in 2020. And just before I get started, I want to let you know that all gear that I'm going to reference in this video is going to be placed in the description box below just to let you know and be transparent. They are affiliate links, so if you decide to purchase anything using the links below, I will get a small commission. So with that being said, let's get into this video. So I want to start and just talk about briefly my journey about how I got into video and pretty much how I went about buying my first camera. So it was about 2018. I didn't know anything about cameras whatsoever. You know, I was just like you. I was on YouTube searching, you know, what is the best camera for YouTube? And um, I came across a lot of information, a lot of stuff I didn't know. I was hearing like, it's almost like hearing a new language. So eventually um, I decided to buy a point and shoot camera from a pawn shop because I really didn't want to jump out there and you know spend a lot of money on a camera because I didn't even know how to use a camera at that point and I kind of just wanted to feel around to see pretty much what I can even do or what I wanted to do with this camera I knew that I wanted to vlog I knew I just wanted to record myself so I didn't know anything about cameras so I bought a uh, point and shoot um, I had that point and shoot for probably about a week or two and I ended up taking it back because the more and more I did more research I slowly found out that uh, although a point and shoot is very capable of capturing yourself, I knew that, um, well I learned that over time it was going to be something that pretty much it was already outdated and that it wasn't going, it wasn't going to be something that I could grow with over time. And that takes me to my first thing that you could, should consider when buying a camera in 2020 is you need to buy something that you can grow with because even if you buy something to meet your needs for today, you kind of got to future proof your camera at least, I would say at least two to three years. You don't want to buy something that's so outdated that a month later you don't even want it and you can't return it. Luckily I, I could return that point and shoot within 30 days. So after I returned that point and shoot, I actually went back to the same pawn shop and I got um, what I didn't know at the time was a Sony A6000. Very good camera. I, I wish I would have kept that camera and by me saying that you already know that I took that camera back as well because um, it was a pretty good camera. Came with a lens. I don't even know what the focal range of that lens was back then because I didn't know anything about anything about lenses or anything. All I knew was that it was a Sony camera. It was uh, mirrorless. It, it was a, you know, that camera had interchangeable lenses. And that takes me to another point of buying a camera in 2020. You want to buy a camera that's future proofed out at least two to three years. And you want to buy something that has interchangeable lenses. This is because, um, you're going to be in different situations that require different focal ranges. Right now, I'm recording on my Cigna, uh, Sigma 18 and 35 f1.8 aperture. Real nice image coming out of this camera. And um, you know, if I was outside and I and I was vlogging, this is kind of that the 18 millimeters isn't as wide, uh, you know, to really show my scene if I'm vlogging. So you need a wide angle lens. I also have the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. So if I want to vlog and show my scene, I need a wide angle lens. If I want to be more punched in or if I want, um, you know, uh, a zoom lens like that's like mid range, I want to be able to get like a 24 to 70. So my whole point is you want to buy a camera that has interchangeable lenses. Uh, you know, in addition to being future proof, you'll also be situation proof because you can change out your uh, lens to have a focal range that fits your situation. So as I was saying, um, I had that Sony probably about two weeks. And the thing that made me take the Sony back, uh, it was kind of my wife a little bit because we were kind of buying a camera to record content together. She was like, why you get that used camera? It was only like $250, which for a Sony A6000 for a beginner, really wasn't a bad deal. But um, I ended up taking that camera back and I think I saved about like two paychecks. And I went and got the camera that I'm recording on now, which is the Canon T7i, which is a great 
great starter camera even today in 2020 if you're just getting into video and photography it's a really lower budget hybrid camera and um like i said i'm very happy with it but i'm at the point where i'm ready to upgrade but as you see I got this in 2018, like I said, it's 2020. This camera is still very capable to do what I needed to do. Uh, me personally, I'm getting into professional videography, professional photography, and I wanna be able to produce higher quality images, um, you know, for clients and even for my own YouTube channel. So I'm ready for a full frame camera. This is a crop sensor camera. There's nothing wrong with crop sensor cameras. However, it would be a lie to not state that full frame cameras produce better images this camera lasted me a long time and i'm actually going to still keep this camera to use when i don't feel like you know lugging around whatever brand new camera i end up getting so as far as a beginner buying a camera in 2020 for the first time you want to make sure that you get something that is future proofed out at least two to three years as i'm telling you even if you don't know about camera you don't know about gear lenses the more and more you get into it and you look at youtube videos and i mean it is what it is. If you have something that's like came out in like, uh, I, I would say before like 2015, it's, it's very outdated. Um, as far as a Canon camera, I wouldn't get any Canon camera that doesn't have dual pixel autofocus, which I think this T7i may be the lowest end camera that has dual pixel autofocus. Um, and as far as Canon too, Canon is a great starter brand. Um, really affordable lenses. Um, it's not the highest quality. I would say probably Sony would probably be the highest quality, uh, you know, for a beginner. But um, Canon is, is, is right there neck and neck. And uh, like I said, the dual pixel autofocus, you can't go wrong with video. You can't even go wrong with photos with that. And you have more budget lens options open to you. And just the whole interface, that Canon offers, it's great for a beginner just to learn how a camera works, period. And some people may disagree with me and they may say that you can start with a Canon T3i or Canon T5i or you know, whatever I, but me personally, it's 2020, you got the Canon R coming out, Canon um, R5 and R6, and um, I wouldn't go no lower than a T7i uh, if you want that high quality, camera footage now if you just want to get something that isn't a cell phone and you don't have a, a big budget you know it is what it is but uh you gotta be realistic with yourself um for what you're trying to do and that would be my third thing to consider when buying a camera now, you're buying a camera because you want to up your quality you don't want the same type of quality that you're getting out of your cell phone you want people to be able to tell the difference with your youtube videos if you want to build a following or if you just want to stand out or just make good looking content if, you know if that's the case if you didn't want to do all that you might as well just get a tripod for your phone and still record with your phone you know you're shopping for a camera for a reason and um the t7i personally i believe you can get a, a used body for like 4.99 which is it's not cheap but it's not the most i would suggest that you get uh, either a canon t7i a canon m50 a canon 6d mark ii uh, they just came out with a canon t8i but personally um based on the specs of that and the price, I would just go with the Canon, the, this right here, the T7i. You can get a Canon SL2. You can also get either an 80D or a Canon 90D. All, all those cameras I just said, those will be the Canon cameras that I would, I would start out with in 2020. No lower than a T7i. And if you're a beginner, you really don't have, I don't, I'm not gonna say you don't have no business, but if you're, it's your first time handling the camera, you really don't have no business going past a 90D for the budget and for your skill set. You gotta keep it real with yourself uh, as far as the level that you're at. Like I stated earlier in the video, right now I'm in um, the market for a new camera. Like I said, the Canon R5 is coming out. Even though that's the most like specked out beast of a camera, you know, that hit the market, even though it's, it's known to have its overheating issues. Me personally, for what I'm trying to do with YouTube, for what I'm trying to do professionally, and the level that I'm at, I wouldn't even get the most out of those specs because like I said, I'm still like that novice, mid-grade, intermediate level. So I have no business really, I mean, I can go get it if I want, but I haven't even really mastered my skills to really justify me purchasing 
a Canon R5, uh, you know, body. I'm actually looking at getting a Canon EOS R, which would be my first uh, full frame camera. I actually rented a Canon EOS R back in May. I really loved it. It has its shortcomings as well, but I'm just ready to get out of the crop sensor life and ready to hop in the full frame. So in 2020, I'm gonna be purchasing the Canon EOS R for myself. Now, if you wanna go the Sony route, I would say, I heard that the, uh, the Sony A6300 isn't that bad. I'm not too knowledgeable on the specs of um, Sony like that. I know the A6300 is a little bit older. I personally would probably go with the A64 or the A6600. Or if you wanna hop out there and you wanna get a full frame camera, you can't go wrong with the Sony A7 III because it has all the features that you need. It's full frame. It is about like $1,700, so it's not really in the price range for a beginner. However, what you're getting as far as the features with that camera for the price, it's really unmatched. Um, any, Sony doesn't really have any um, cheaper full frame cameras that are at least like newer. If you go to the A7 II, that came out in about like, a, like around 2015 and the video specs aren't as good as the A7 III, but maybe I'm talking you into getting ahead of yourself. Maybe the A7 II may work for you, but the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to do your research, man. It sucks, I wouldn't go so crazy into watching video after video after video because then you'll just you'll just go crazy and not end up buying anything and overthinking it however i would just take what it is that you're trying to do with this camera along with your budget and just be realistic with you know keep the skills and your level that you're at in mind and then just pull the trigger on whatever camera makes sense so with that being said, the three things you should consider as a beginner when purchasing a camera in 2020 is to buy a camera that is future-proofed at least for the next two to three years. To give yourself time to learn, then you can upgrade and you won't dread the purchase a month or two after you get it. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you get a camera with interchangeable lenses. I know that some manufacturers like Sony just came out with a recent uh, type of it's not really a point and shoot, but it's like a one lens camera, the ZV-1. Like I said, there's other point and shoot options, but I'm not saying that you're gonna regret it, but you're gonna, what I'm telling you, you're going to want to have a camera where you can change the lens in and out to proof yourself for any situation. Even by just having the capability to change out your lens, even if you don't own a lens, even if you can work up to buying a lens, you'll always be good knowing that you can get you know, the type of focal range that you're gonna require for whatever you're doing. And last but not least, keep it real with yourself for your budget and the level that you're at in your photography journey. Um, if you're a beginner, don't spend too much. You know, gear doesn't really matter uh, as much as people think, but it does matter. So I would buy something that you can learn with, that you can grow with for a couple of years before you upgrade. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for this video. If you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll catch you guys later on. Peace out, baby.